must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one. I support a change in law to end federal criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana. That marijuana, pot, grass, whatever you want to call it, is probably the most dangerous drug. Some think there won't be room for them in jail. We'll make room. I experimented with marijuana a time or two, and I didn't like it and didn't inhale. And one major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. Entirely legitimate topic uh, for debate. Radical Rant. Welcome back, everyone. 46 and a half after the hour. And today, a little more of the preview, my presentation, how not to piss off your cannabis business clientele. Be delivering this Sunday at 5 p.m. at the High Times Cannabis Cup in San Bernardino, California. And today we take a look at public relations with the cannabis community. And it's important for all of these uh, new, especially the newcomers to the marijuana industry to understand that marijuana ain't cheeseburgers. A marijuana consumer has a relationship and an identity with the product much more significant than most products. And that is all driven by the fact that we have been outlaws for 80 years now in most of the states. We have been criminals. Every one of us who uses marijuana, regardless of the reason why we use it, fits into that social status of criminal, second-class citizen, someone whose rights can be abused at will by the government. Now, Along with that criminal status, many of us take on another social status depending on our relationship with the plant. For some of us, it's a, it's a cultural identity, the so-called stoners, people whose lives re revolve around cannabis and, and take great pleasure in using cannabis. For other people, the worshipers, they have a spiritual significance that they attach to cannabis, whether it's a it's a codified religion like Rastafarianism or Coptic Christianity or more of a just a love of nature, love of plants type of a Wiccan sort of spirituality. There are also those for whom marijuana is a medical necessity. Those are the patients, the medical marijuana patients who don't want to be criminals, but have no choice. They have to be merely to survive. And then there are the activists, those for whom the prohibition of marijuana is a travesty in our democracy, a travesty against freedom and everything that we stand for as a country. And one example that I think very vividly demonstrates this lack of understanding of the marijuana consumer as a specific type of culture comes in the case of open vape. Now, Open Vape makes vaporizer pens, little portable vaporizer pens. Last year, on April 17th, they issued a press release that explained that Open Vape, the nation's largest cannabis brand, will test employees for dangerous drugs of abuse. According to their former spokesperson, Todd Mitchum, quote, Our view is simple. We won't tolerate dangerous drug use by our employees. Now, this particular policy, they were trying to make a big PR splash with it and to show how progressive they were in understanding that cannabis is a much safer drug by touting it as, as a progressive sort of policy since it wouldn't test their employees for the use of marijuana. But they would still be testing through the use of urine tests for the use of cocaine, methamphetamines, LSD, and so forth. What they didn't understand was a very important cultural touchstone in the marijuana movement and those who are cannabis com consumers. And it goes back to that criminal status that I spoke about. It goes back to the idea that if you are discovered to be a marijuana consumer, you can lose your job, your kids, your security clearance, your assets, and your freedom. And they did not understand that it's not what drug you're detecting in someone's urine. It's being offended at the demand for urine to determine our competency. As a culture, we have felt discriminated against because we weren't able to get jobs we were perfectly qualified for just because of the fact we enjoyed marijuana on our time off. And so we have a very sensitive reaction to the idea that people are being judged by the contents of their piss and not the contents of their character or their ability or their resume. Now, as activists, many people called out Todd Mitchum and the Open Vape Company through Twitter, through social media, in order to express extreme displeasure with this new policy change. And when called out, 
they didn't understand the first rule of when you find yourself in a hole, stop digging, and instead brought out the trench excavator and dug a hole deep and wide in one of the biggest public relations disasters in cannabis history. This began when Tom Angel from the Marijuana Majority uh, activism group, excuse me, sorry, get the right slide up there. Uh, it began when uh, Tom Angel with Mar Marijuana Majority and others called out uh, Todd Mitchum, the open vape former corporate spokesperson, saying, can we talk about reversing discriminatory open vape drug testing policy as soon as possible in lieu of a public campaign or petition against it? So a simple request, we don't want to protest or petition against you, but can we talk about this? And the response from Todd Mitchum at Open Vape was, we are keeping people safe. So sorry you don't care about employee safety. Grownups need to behave differently. Note to Open Vape and other companies, marijuana consumers are not motivated to buy your product through passive aggressive taunts that we are immature children who support dangerous workplaces. In response, uh, we had uh, Tom Angel reply, sorry, I'm sorry, this wasn't Tom's, this was another reformer saying, sorry, drug testing flies in the face of everything the marijuana movement is about. You will never see me buy one of your products. Mitchum replied, I guess I missed the memo where the marijuana community was fighting for employers embracing the abuse of dangerous drugs. Note, when influential movement activists are expressing why you've angered them, implying that everyone that follows them supports workplace drug abuse costs you one customer for every direct Twitter follower and every retweeted mention. But he couldn't stop digging. There's another uh, response from Tom Angel and re other reformers saying, if employers can't decide whether or not an applicant is a meth addict via interviews, they are incompetent. To which Mitchum replied, the point here is that we must teach the public cannabis doesn't belong in the same category as dangerous drugs. Well, it wasn't too long ago that marijuana consumers were using the dangerous drug that didn't belong in the same category as alcohol. Those of us in the marijuana community are very sensitive to the call for oppressing other communities. Should also be noted that some in the marijuana community also like some of these other drugs. They might like to use ecstasy at a rave. They might like to take mushrooms on a camping trip. They don't like the idea of oppressing people for what they do outside of work. That's the main point. The reformers responded, public relations strategy gone wrong. You will face backlash from us activists who have worked to make your industry legal. To which Mitchum replied, the strategy was careful to support mainstream cannabis use, but protect the industry from dangerous accidents. Well, here's a case of using the language of the oppressor. And this is something quickly noticed by those who've formerly been oppressed. Protecting the workplace from dangerous accidents? Why, that was the rationale to deny marijuana users' rights, too. And finally, in this uh, long diatribe back and forth, Tom Angel concluded with Todd Mitchum missed the memo not to mess with activists who are so good, we passed laws that led to his industry's creation. To which Mitchum concluded, Tom, it's unfortunate that you did not call me directly. We could have had a real grown-up discussion. Condescension is never a good way to sell your brand. When you start a fire, it's not the fire department's job to call you. Due diligence would include reaching out to experts before announcing your policy or at a minimum reaching out to them kindly after they complain. Now, the follow-up on this is that Todd Mitchum is no longer the corporate spokesperson for uh, Open Vape Company. Uh, he had sent me a couple of emails personally asking me uh, to back off on my criticism of Open Vape for their policy. I had written a couple of articles on this and he had asked me to take them down, to which I refused. Uh, Mitchum complained also that he had gotten threats from people in the marijuana community, people threatening him and his family. That, of course, is nothing that we support or intend to happen. But I think that may have been an indication of the level of anger and the level of 
of cultural insensitivity that was felt from the marijuana community when a company like Open Vape, one of ours, a company making our product, would be so tone deaf on what the cannabis community would react to when it came to this drug testing. And from a economic point of view, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. Uh, as we noted in, a, uh, in our uh, rant yesterday, the frequency of consumption by marijuana consumers shows that for every stoner, every frequent consumer that you lose for your customer, it takes about 20 infrequent consumers to make up for them. That is, every time you do something to anger the activist base, those people that are probably consuming the most marijuana, you are slitting your own throat. I don't know how much this open vape controversy uh, still resonates with people throughout the cannabis community, but I know myself personally, from that moment on, I have never bought another open vape cartridge. And I buy a vaporizer pen cartridge every week, a one gram cartridge every week. So that's one huge consumer, at least one, that open vape has lost. Now, I... You know, not to brag or anything, but I have about 13,000 Twitter followers and every one of those 13,000 people heard my diatribes and followed my links to my articles about open vape and their drug testing policy. And many of those 13,000 people retweeted that information to those followers. I have about a 55,000 follower reach through retweets. So there's the potential that 55,000 people who are very educated and interested cannabis consumers and who I would bet are on the heavy end of the scale when it comes to regular consumption are hearing negative things about your brand, about your company and responding to some of the most terrible PR on social media regarding even outside of the marijuana community. I mean, this is terrible PR for any business to be condescending and taunting and belittling to their best customers. So this will be my part of my presentation on Sunday, five o'clock PM, San Bernardino, California at the National Orange Center. It's part of the High Times Southern California Cannabis Cup. I hope to see some of you there. This presentation will also be uploaded to the radicalrest.com website. It'll be uploaded to the 420 Radio Shop. If you would like to download your own copy, It'll be for sale, and when it goes up, at first it'll be available for $4.20, and then that will go up in probably about a month or so. Remember, if you're a VIP member of 420 Radio, you can get a 10 to 50% discount on the cost of any of those downloads. And of course, we'll be streaming it on the Radical Rust Live channel. 420 Radio will run as usual on Saturday and Sunday, but you can catch my cell phone streaming on the Radical Rust channel. I'll provide a link to it up at 420 Radio and through my Twitter account, at Radical Rust. That's all the time we got for today. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Hour 2 is next. I'm Radical Rust. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Rust Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you die it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you die it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you die it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes.